hand balances. Jazz hands. Wow. How do we help ourselves and our students prepare to do these poses effectively and safely? I mean, yoga is full of these poses. Bakasana, crow pose, vasishtasana, side plank, not to mention all those crazy ones like ekapada galavasana, ekapada kundanyasana, and all of these wild hand balances, which are super fun. So how do we get there? So in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite warm-up techniques that I like to do, as well as the one essential tip that I think is great to give to your own practice or give to your students so that you can do these poses properly in the long run. So when we're preparing for these poses, first of all, just one logical thing to keep in mind with your sequencing is don't kill people on their hands and their wrists. So if you're planning for your peak pose to be like a big hand balance kind of pose, then maybe back off of all of those crazy chaturangas. Just kind of read the layer. Cause like these muscles can get tired too, right? And so we want people to arrive for the peak with enough juice kind of in the truck, oh, bad metaphor, but to do the pose properly. So that said, when we stretch muscles out, it actually can reduce their effectiveness. So, you know, sports people know this. That's why they often will roll parts of their bodies rather than stretching them before, say, a big run or something like that. So just in our own little way, I kind of take that to heart. So the two exercises that I'm going to show you right now, and I will tell you right away, these are from Ido Portal and, uh, and his crew of people who are doing such amazing work with movement. Got these exercises from them. They're great. Um, but these are active stretches, right? So even though I am stretching the muscles, I'm also putting the muscles under load, which I think generally speaking is a better kind of warm up than just stretching. So what we'll do is we'll start on our hands and our knees, right? So my hands are outer shoulder distance apart. And, and one thing to keep in mind is right from the beginning of your teaching or your practice, you want to set your hands up properly. So what that looks like is hands outer shoulder distance apart. So what does that mean? That means that my deltoid, the outer deltoid is lined up with the center of my wrist. And I also want my hands to be pretty neutral. Generally speaking as a baseline, that would mean center of the wrist lined up with the space between the index and middle finger. Although for some people who need a little bit more help with this external rotation, or maybe need a little bit more space, you might take the hands further apart or turn the hands out slightly. I don't usually do like flipper, fingers, right? And all oh, this one might be an interesting activity, but I wouldn't land people in this kind of rotation normally, but maybe the index finger pointing forward. Even that can just help us get a little bit more of external rotation in the upper arm, which is useful for our hand balances. So first things first, you got to set the, the position up properly. Um, so once I've got that in this exercise, what I'll do is I'll lift the heels of my hands up. So by the heel of my hand, I mean the base of my palm, and uh, what I'm focusing on doing, I let my thumb come with me, is that I'm lifting the heel of the hand up and putting the weight into my knuckles and my fingers, right? And then as I do this, I also want to maintain this nice external rotation of the upper arms. And then I slowly lower the heels of the hands down. And then you lift up. It's like you're levitating. So we don't want it to be jerky. We don't want to plop down or jerk up. It's like a slow, smooth, Movement, oh, oh my gosh. Keeping the outer arms pinned in. Now, the tendency when you do this is going to be to shift back, right? Because you're like, that's hard. <laughs> so everybody's like, I'll just come back here. Keep your shoulders over your wrists as best you can, right? Now, if this is accessible for you, if you're like, I got this, I can control this movement, you can start to walk your knees back. And what that does is it puts more, like this is hard for me, it puts more body weight, right, into your um, action. So those, oh, nice and slow. Ooh. <sighs> so that's an active stretch. We're working into the muscles of the wrist and we're warming them up, but we're also strengthening them, which is useful. Also, the benefit of this exercise is that it's training your students to get the weight into the front of their hand. So anytime that we're doing a hand balance, the most typical path of, um, of misalignments, the path of least resistance is of course to pop the weight all into your wrist and usually the lateral wrist. And so we collapse there and lift up the inner hand. And so this exercise is training 
teaching your body how to keep the weight into the knuckles and into the fingers, which helps to disperse the weight over a greater surface area, which is super helpful for all of those hand balances. So this is a great one to do. And I, I recommend, you know, especially for all of our typing warriors out there, this is just awesome to work into your class. Even if you do like five to 10 reps at the beginning, something like that. Um, I think it's really useful for the body, just for everybody, not even if we're doing hand balances. So that's the first exercise. The second exercise that I recommend is doing the opposite. So in this one, and again, these are both Edo Portal um, movements, <clears throat> although I'm, probably some other people do them too. I'm gonna be on my fist like a little gorilla, and then nice and slow, I roll to the outside of my wrist. Watch my elbows come wide, my chest comes down, I keep my shoulder blades on my back, and then I slowly press up and through. At the top, straighten your elbows and give the outer arms a little squeeze in. So we're working that external rotation of the humerus, okay? And so, again, in this one, you'll probably wanna slide back or, you know, kind of eke out of it somehow. So keep your shoulders over your wrists and make sure you can control this movement. Easy breath, right? And as it gets more accessible and you get stronger, you can walk your knees back a little bit. Keep your core engaged here. And that'll add a little bit more intensity. And again, you know, five to 10 times maybe, something like that. Those two exercises, I think, are gold. Okay, now let's talk about the one action that I really love to teach my students who are preparing to do hand balances. And this is good for, I teach this right from the beginning in Cat and Cow. Right from the beginning of class, you can work this into your teaching and it really helps to set students' hands and shoulders up for success when they get to those more weight-bearing postures. And this is what we call the pickle jars. And I learned this from my teacher, Fiona Stang, who's an Ashtangi up in Vancouver. So the pickle jars are essentially this kind of action. So if your hands are like this, the pickle jar is you're turning those cans open. You're trying to open the lids by turning the hands apart from each other. Now we don't actually move the hands when they're on the mat, but that action of like screwing your hands into the floor helps to do a couple things. One, you can see that when I screw my hand into the floor, this part of my hand is gonna become more active. Right? And as we've talked about, a common misalignment for most of these hand balances is that we land on the outside of our wrist, right? So if I can really push the inner hand down and turn it into the floor, that's gonna get more weight through my fingers. Again, we talked about how useful that is. And it's gonna weight the inner edge of my hand, which is where we tend to lose connection. So pickle jar. The other thing, look what it's doing to my shoulder. What's happening there, okay? I'm a little chicken wing, okay? So what's happening is that I'm adducting, pulling my humerus in. So it's out here and I'm pulling it in. You guys, we do this in cat cow. We can do this in downward facing dog. We do this in wheel pose. So what does that do? And this is one of those mysteries. I'll tell you, I have been really interested in like what the heck is going on in the shoulder, which muscles are activating. I'm still figuring it out, but here's a couple little pieces that I think are relevant. So when we adduct the arm, you can feel, if you stick your hand into your armpit, you're like, ooh, a lot of muscles there are firing up. Well, two of the muscles that are firing up as you adduct your arm are the lats, which are these big muscles that you know, connect your arm bone to your back, your pecs, which connects your arm bone to your chest. So you're getting these two sling muscles to fire up and support your humerus. Not to mention, there's a little external rotation happening here, which is the back of your shoulder blade, which is your rotator cuff, pulling it on in. And those external rotators help to kind of wind up the joint a little bit to make it more stable. So those are just a couple of pieces of why this little chicken wing action is so useful. So let's try it together. Come onto your hands and to your knees. Place your hands again. Have outer shoulder distance apart. You know it. And line up the center of your wrist with the space between your index and middle finger. Or maybe you need a little more space, you widen those index fingers out. Now, you gotta soften your joints. So I know in a lot of styles of yoga, we're often in you know that straight arm, right? It's really extending the joint. Like Iyengar, right? I, my teacher's always like, 
straight in the joint, right? In this, for these kinds of hand balances, I think a little bit of buoyancy, a little bit of flexion is super helpful. It helps to get those muscles around the joint stabilized. And I think that that's, for me, this is a little bit more useful than the straight position. So bend the elbows a little bit so you can get a little bit of space there and then press the inner edge of your hand down, the index finger, and try to turn your hands out. Oh, and notice you can feel that all the way up into your armpit. So we're connecting the hands to the shoulder girdle, which is super important for all of the stability, right? And then you find that. You can find that here in, in cat cow as you're, you know, I'm gonna screw my hands into the floor. It's a little bit like um, Fiona used to describe it, you know, like the little kar the karate kid kind of action, like wax on, wax off. To me, it feels like a jellyfish. So it's not like, it's not rigid, but there's a, this feeling, a pulsation almost of kind of hugging in to keep these guys sort of pliable and, and gathering continually. So you can set this up for your students in something as simple as cat cow. Right, even here I can feel that, right? And it helps people to can create this nice connection between the action of their hands and the actions of their shoulders. Now, one place this really can be taught super effectively, and I think it's useful, I'm just gonna kinda lay on my side here, is in side plank. So when I have my hand anchored and I turn my hand into the floor, this external rotation of the upper arm and there's a slight also retraction pulling in of the scapula which is what we need so and I'll just keep my knee down for support but when I'm doing side plank or any of these one of the worst things that can happen is the shoulder falling in we do not want that that is not a happy relationship for this poor little joint so by turning the hand into the floor gathering this elbow underneath me I'm starting to pull the shoulder blade like hug the shoulder blade against the rib cage which will engage your serratus here right underneath you to support you. And then that shoulder blade gets nice and snug and stable, and that helps to support the whole weight of your body. So when you're working into poses like, you know, side plank, I like to do that in a little less weight bearing first, and even get my students to take their hand to their shoulder blade, pull it down and wrap it around. Again, that's, that's uh, activating this big guy serratus under here, which was a primary stabilizer of your scapula, right? So we screw the hand into the floor, we snuggle the shoulder blade onto the rib cage, and that's gonna give you a nice pillar from which to support your own body weight. So, before we get into any fanciness or wild hand balances, that action, the little pickle jar, pulling it up into your shoulder action, is awesome. And again, any pose, you find it in cat, you find it in downward facing dog, you know? You can find it in any pose where really your hands are anchored into the floor to give you that nice foundation. And that is gonna set you and your students up for success as you move into those more weight-bearing postures on your hands. Now, of course, once you've done all of that work and been on your hands at the end of class, it can be nice to do a few stretches. So, I mean, some simple ones that are really nice, just wrist rolls. Nothing too crazy. That can be really nice. I like to do the cowardly line. What I call it is like this way forward, like put them up, put them up, right? To stretch the backs of the wrists. That can be really nice. Ah, good. And then of course, taking them in the opposite direction, extending the hand out. This is like a little Spider-Man stretch. So I like to pull the thumb back gently. It gets into these little thumb adductors and flexors, which can feel really good. Stretch the rest of your fingers. You could gently pull on the fingers. I don't love pulling on the fingers one at a time. I gotta say it feels a little too intense, but maybe all the fingers at once, for me personally, feels nicer. And then you could hold these stretches. I'm moving through them kind of quickly, but you could hold them for like, you know, good 15, 20 seconds, something like that. Give the hands a little shake. Um, also, don't forget that the hands have done a lot of work, the forearms have done a lot of work, but also the shoulders have done a lot of work. So giving them some nice stretches. So taking the arms back, right? Going across, stretching the front of the shoulder, taking the arm up, giving the triceps a little stretch, the lats a little stretch. You know, arms wide to do pecs. You could hold a strap. So um, once you've done hand balances or things like that, just giving all of this, all of these muscles a little bit of a stretch, a little bit of love. Um, but for the hands and the wrists, yeah, 
Keep it easy, stretch in both directions, um, and that'll be a nice little way to round off a hand balancing class. So hey guys, I really hope that you have enjoyed this. Hand balancing is one of those things in yoga which is super fun, but we wanna do it safely and we wanna have a clear path for how to create the strength necessary to do those poses well and to have those poses actually support our body strength. So we can use those poses as a pathway into developing our own upper body strength and you know, some great shoulder stability. So there you go, there's a couple of um, active stretches I like to do, and also that one key point of pickle jarring the hands, which is so super effective for developing resilience, longevity, and strength to do these poses. I hope you liked it. If you did, subscribe for more tips. I'm gonna keep working on this mystery of like, hey, what are all these different muscles doing? Because I, I find it so fascinating. If you have any suggestions, comments, thoughts, um, insights, please put them in the comments below. I always love to hear from you and enjoy.